Hey there everyone and welcome to one of our first news posts about Fall the Republic, our Clone Wars era mod for Empire at War Forces of Corruption. So we said in the initial announcement for Fall the Republic that we'd be focusing solely on Imperial Civil War until release, except for some art assets, and that has been the case essentially, which is why we haven't had too many videos or news posts or even screenshots of Fall the Republic. As we get closer to the Imperial Civil War release, we'll be able to start talking about Fall the Republic a bit more. Uh, so keep in mind that while the ultimate, while ultimately the mod will cover a larger time period, the first two releases will solely cover the three years of the Clone Wars, and so that's what these faction profiles in this video will cover, or the unit list. So before we get into that though, we just want to thank everyone for all their support during Mod of the Year so far. Uh, all three of our mods, so Imperial Civil War, Ascendancy, and Father Public made it into the top 100, so if you would like to vote for us in this second phase of voting, we'd really appreciate it. There's links to it in the description for all three. You just click on those links, it'll bring you to the page, and then you can click the vote button next to any of the mods. So again, thanks for all your support everyone, but now we will get into the rosters. So we'll be starting with the Republic Space roster. Uh, they have a few things that might seem a little strange to some people or some that will seem fairly familiar for the uh, for people who have played Imperial Civil War. There's a lot of overlap between uh, what they have and a lot of what the Empire and the Warlord factions have. So the first three, their largest ships, will be the Praetor 1, the Imperator, and the Tector. So the Imperator is the original name for the Imperial 1 class Star Destroyer. Uh, the Imperial 1 and the Tector were actually designed during the uh, later phase of the Clone Wars. So they will be available in very limited numbers during the last era of the mod. They won't be a common ship by any means, but they will be present in some form. Uh, they will also have access at some point to the Mandator 2 class. Uh, this is something that likely won't make it in for the first release, the Mandator 2. Uh, it's more likely to be in the second version of the mod. In terms of your mainline capitals as the Republic, you will have the Eclameter classes, which is the Eclameter 1 and Eclameter 2. You have the Dreadnought class Heavy Cruiser, the Venator, and the Victory 1 class Star Destroyer. So the VSD-1 will come in a little later in the mod, uh, and the Venator will be uh, your mainline ship for the first two eras for the most part. Uh, the Dreadnought will be a lot more common in Era 1. They'd be more of a starting forces kind of thing. Uh, so in terms of your, uh, your lighter frigates, you'll have the Light Assault Cruiser, the Carrot class Cruiser, the Architens, and the Charger. The Republic and the CIS actually both have quite a few fighters. Uh, we'll be including as many of them as we can. Uh, so you have the ARC-170, the Delta-7 Aether Sprite, the Ada-2 Actis. Uh, those last two are the Jedi Starfighters from the, la from, the, from the movies. Then you have the V-19 Torrent, the H-60 Tempest Bomber, the Z-90, Z-95, the Y-Wing, the Alpha-3 Nimbus, the NTB-630, and the PTB-625. Uh, so the NTB-630 and PTB-625, along with the H-60 Tempest, are probably less familiar to most people. Uh, like the Mandator 2, they'll probably be left off until the second version of the mod, though. Uh, they're going to be, even when they are in the mod, they'll be a lot less common than things like the ARC-170. But uh, yeah, so the ground roster now for the Republic, you have the ATRT, the ATPT, the ATAP, which is the a uh, large gun thing from Forces of Corruption, uh, the Juggernaut A5 and A6 variants, the ATTE, uh, the Bark Speeder, the, the LAT, the TX-130 Saber Tank, the TX-130T Saber Tank variant, uh, the AV-7, which is the, uh, like the artillery cannon thing that it has, that they have from the cartoon, uh, the ISP, which is the, I believe it's called the Swamp Speeder in Forces of Corruption, and the UTAT. Uh, for their infantry, they'll have clone troopers of the Phase 1 and Phase 2 kinds, uh, ARC troopers, and Jedi. So people have also asked us about, about whether we're going to be doing anything with the battalions. Uh, we'll cover what our plans may or may not be for that a bit later on. Uh, our goals for the first version is more to just get all the base rosters in and not get... Uh, we won't be focusing too heavily on things like those kind of variants, but that'll be something that we talk about a bit more uh, towards the actual creation of the mod. Um, another thing to note while you're watching this video or reading the unit rosters, there are going to be units added as we make further versions of the mod. We're essentially trying to come up with the core rosters right now uh, so we can get a version out that's stable and uh, has the factions fairly fleshed out even if it doesn't have everything that's ever been mentioned in Legends for them but we will be fleshing them out more as we go through uh, different versions just like we did with Imperial Civil War. The goal though is to not take like five years to make the first version. We want to ideally get uh, something out uh, at least one version, if not two, in 2018. But yeah, so for the Republic roster, the things that still need to be done are actually just the Light Assault Cruiser, the Charger, Mandator 2, H-60 Tempest, Y-Wing, uh, the NTB and PTB bombers I mentioned, the Bark Speeder, the AV-7, 
uh, ARC Troopers and the UTAT. Everything else for them is pretty much done, and even that, I think actually the ATRT still needs to be done. But for the most part, we have a pretty strong basis to work off of with those guys. Uh, some of the models we have for the CIS and the Republic are a little bit older, so they will be upgrade, updated a bit more as we go as well. Uh, like the Munificent for the CIS, that'll be updated a bit. But uh, for the most part, we are on... Uh, we're moving pretty quickly through the art assets. So now we'll move over to the CIS here. Uh, so the CIS, we will we'll try to start representing the faction earlier on in the eras as the more loose association that it was. And then when they uh, got Grievous in charge, they started integrating a bit more. And we're going to try to have some mechanics related to that. But we will go into that a bit more uh, later on. So uh, for their space roster... We have a little bit less of their stuff developed, and some of their stuff that we do have developed is uh, tends to be the older models. But uh, we are making a lot of progress there as well. Max uh, Maxwell from Star Trek Armada 3 has joined the team to help develop some of the Fall of the Republic models, and he did uh, the new Lucre Hulk, the new Vulture Droid and Hyena Bomber. But anyways, so their main roster for their super ship, they have the Subjugator. They also have the Lucre Hulk and a couple variants. So you have like the Battleship, the Droid Control Ship, uh, their mainline capital ships will be the Providence and the Bulwark. Uh, their main frigates will be the Recusant, the Munificent, uh, the Geonosian Cruiser, and the Captor Class. Uh, I think it's Captor Class Munition Ship, uh, which will function sort of as a carrier. Then for their smaller frigates, you have the Diamond Class, the Gozanti, the Lupus, and the C9979. So the Gozanti is something that'll probably pop up in a few factions. It was. Uh, a common civilian freighter that was also modified for military use by the CIS. Uh, for their fighters, you'll have vulture droids, hyena bombers, trade federation bombers, uh, the Belbalab, the Nantex, the rogue class, which is kind of a modified Porax from Revenge of the Sith, the droid tri fighter, the Mangfin 814, and the Genevex, which is uh, the fantail fighter that uh, Ventress had in the original Clone Wars cartoon. I think that was the main place it appeared in. It might have been in some other stuff, but that's the main place it appeared. Uh, and for their ground unit roster, for their larger vehicles, you have Octoptara droids, Crab droids, Hailfire droids, the AAT, the GAT, which is the ground armored tank, which is the angry looking thing from the Clone Wars video game, I think. Uh, then you have the HAG, which is the sort of artillery variant of the AAT tank. Uh, then you have the HMP and MAF, which are the uh, sort of the semi-saucer shaped with a cockpit attached uh, lad equivalents for the CIS from the Battlefront games. Then you have the MTT, which is the large uh, troop transport from uh, Phantom Menace. And I think... Oh, the uh, Persuader class Enforcer tank and Spider droids. So the Persuader class is the snail droid uh, and the spider droids are the giant four-legged walker things. And for their infantry, it's kind of hard to know how to separate their infantry versus their vehicles here. Uh, because it's all droids, so either way, uh, you have the B1 Battle Droid, the B2 Super Battle Droid, the Magna Guard, the BX Commando Droid, the Droidica Mark 1 and 2, and the STAP. So some of you might be thinking, uh, Droidica Mark 2, wasn't that just an FOC? But uh, this, I'm actually going to tie this into uh, the discussion about the Clone Wars cartoon, where a lot of people don't seem to realize that the Clone Wars cartoon is actually part of Legends as well as the new canon. It's one of the few things that's part of both, uh, but Overall, the main thing we use as the primary source for the mods is the Essential Guide to Warfare. Uh, so while there are some contradictions between the Clone Wars cartoon and other sources, uh, that's true of pretty much everything, especially in this time period. Uh, there's like three or four different sh main strains you can follow through for the Clone Wars. And uh, the Essential Guide to Warfare, in my opinion, and in uh, the opinion of the team more broadly, is usually the best thing to try to tie together all these sources and retcon everything into a coherent continuity so in terms of plot usually we go primarily with what's in the essential guide to warfare and then if it gets more granular if it gets uh more specific than that we'll go to the original sources for stuff and try to work it out from there uh but we are this is a legends mod but the clone wars cartoon is part of that legends uh continuity the essential guide to warfare does a really good job of retconning everything in a way that makes sense and doesn't uh contradict too much so that is usually what we go with. And the Droidica Mark II, even though it was introduced in Forces of Corruption, which is set much later, uh, it was retconned by the Essential Guide to Warfare as being a late CIS unit. Uh, so it's something that you'll be able to 
essentially research and put to use a little bit as the CIS uh, in the later parts of the game. So in the later parts of what will be Era 3 in uh, the initial release and Era 5 by the end of Father Public's development. Uh, so Heroes will be covered in separate posts a little bit later. We're going to do a different post for each one. But hopefully this guy, this gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're going for with the mod. Uh, again, if you want to vote for us in Mod of the Year for any of the three mods, we'd really appreciate it. But that's going to do it for now. So thanks for watching, everyone. If you have any questions uh, or comments, please leave them in the comments. And uh, I will do my best to read and answer them all. Uh, even if I don't have a chance to get to every single one of them, uh, I can assure you that I do read everything. Uh, but yeah, so thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.